this summer, Zacharias Weinhardt presents the next big epic video tutorial. Oh, hi. hi everyone, Zach here. And in this video we take a look on how to create a Sphinx cat in Blender. This Sphinx cat was created for Sculpt January 2017, so pretty old already. But I thought finally let's do a video about it. So this cat was originally created in Cycles, but since Blender 2.8 is in early alpha at the moment, you can just import old models from Cycles and view it in real time basically with just a few tweaks. This is totally awesome. So in this video we will take a look on the sculpting process, but not just a time lapse, it's a time lapse with some tutorial parts. So you will learn some cool tricks along the way. Then we will take a look how I created the materials, but this time not in Cycles. We will take a look in EV for Blender 2.8, which is pretty similar to Cycles in terms of the materials, but we can view everything in real time, which is totally awesome. So yeah, we will take a look how I created the skin shader, the gold shader and the eye shader. And talking about the eye shader, this video here is supported by Christoph Werner and his awesome CW eye shader for Cycles, which is extremely customizable and you can get 10% off by following the link down below in the video description. More about the eye shader later on. And I will also show you how I created this nice little camera movement animation you just saw at the beginning of the video. All right, guys, as always, if you want to have my free Blender Sculpting Sheet Sheet with all the important shortcuts for Blender Sculpt Mode, follow the free download link in the video description. And if you want to learn sculpting, beginner friendly, but also all the tips for the advanced users, check out my Mastering Sculpting Workshop with over 60 videos and a total running time of 12 hours. There you will learn everything you need to know about sculpting in Blender. All right, guys, without further words, let's get started. By the way, you can download all the project files like the Blender 2.8 EV file, the Blender 2.79 Cycles file, and also the full real-time recording of the sculpting process without commentary. The link you find in the video description. So I started with a crappy sketch in Mischief to get my idea of this Sphinx cat down. But yeah, since this looks crappy, let's just get over to Blender. I started with uh, the default cube and subdivided this using a subsurf modifier, apply the modifier, and then in sculpt mode using basically the snake hook brush and some other brushes, I shaped the neck and the head a bit out of the sphere here, just to get the base ideas for the, the shape of the head. Then with a plane and a solidify modifier, I added separate ears. And with a paid speed sculpt add-on I use here, I joined those two parts, but you can also use the free bool tool add-on for this to join different parts or elements. Okay, let's quickly take a look on how this works. First of all, go to file, user preferences, add-ons, search for bool tool, enable this and save the user settings. Then you have the bool tools add-on over here. So now let's add a plane with shift A. On this plane, I put a solidify modifier to add thickness and a subdivision surface modifier and increase the subdivisions. Now in edit mode, for example, you can extrude this. Let's delete the upper face here. And then you can see you can easily create the shapes for the ears. Now let's switch back to object mode, place this somewhere here. You can also create multiple objects and apply all the modifiers for the sphere here. It's already applied. Now let's select the ears and with shift as last object, the sphere here. And then we have the auto boolean operation. That means it will use a boolean modifier, but applies this immediately. If you don't want this, you can use the brush boolean operations down here, then it will add a boolean modifier. So let's just use auto boolean, click on union, then both objects will be unified. And if we now switch to sculpt mode, let's enable din topo, constant detail, let's check the resolution, and let's choose the clay strips brush. Just click on the edges between the objects to add geometry there. 
And then by holding down shift, we can enable the smooth brush. And since we now added geometry over here, we can easily smooth this area. And in this way, we have a nice transition between these two objects or the three objects. And in this way, I added the ears to the head and later on also the body to the head. Yeah, then I go more into the details, uh, try to shape everything a little bit better. So here a little trick if you want to add holes, for example, for the ears and stuff like this. Let's imagine these are the ears. And now we want to add a little hole in here. Then I always use the blob brush. Dintopo is enabled and then with control, I invert the brush and then I can easily create the hole. Same trick I use for nose holes and other holes all around the body. And also, if you just want to increase the cavity of the ear, you can use the inverted blob brush to make this easily. Robo hamster want to play with you. Want to play with you. Here I added placeholder eyes just to get an idea where the eyes are and that I can better sculpt the eyelids and stuff like this. And as you can see, for a really long time, I kept the resolution relatively low to get the main shapes right. So I really tried to shape things around with the snake hook brush or the grab brush. You can easily move parts of your sculpting to make the shape look better. Here with the simple plane, I started to shape the head of uh, the Sphinx cat here. Uh, I guess I messed a few things up there, so it took a while. So let's speed things up a bit. This is just the base mesh I wanted to have to switch to sculpt mode and yeah, sculpt some details on this shape. So as you can see in sculpt mode, I shaped things around, added some geometry here and there, and um, also added details later on, but more about this later. Then I changed the camera position because this should just be a static render at the time I created this. And I realized that I need a little bit more body. So I added this uh, stretched sphere here as body and added an uh, idea of a leg there. So I don't create any legs or anything like this, just to get an idea of the body. So here's a little trick uh, with the camera. When you press numpad zero, you can switch to the camera perspective. If you zoom out a bit, you still can see the whole areas around the camera. And for me, it's a bit harder to really understand what we will see in the final image. Certainly, I know that this is in the box here, but I still see the rest. So I don't get the real impression of the final image. So what I do, I select the camera, go to the camera settings, object data here, and under display, I increase the alpha of pass per two to one. Then you can see the whole area around the camera is just black. And now we can better see and frame our image for the final rendering. Here I sharpen the edges of the head, make it look more nice. Although it's not perfect in the end, I think it looks quite nice with the gold shader on it. So definitely enough for the sculpting here. So a lot of tweaking and sharpening the edges from different angles. So let's quickly take a look on how we can add sharp creases here to an object in sculpt mode. So let's switch to sculpt mode, control D for dynamic topology, constant detail. Let's check the resolution. Let's increase this a bit. And most of the time I just use the crease brush by inverting this by holding down control. I can invert the crease brush. You can see I create basically an inverted crease, so a sharp edge here. And in this way, especially if you're just creating organic shapes, you can nicely sharpen edges in this way. Certainly, you can also add some geometry using the clay strips brush here. Smooth this area maybe a bit. For smoothing areas, I also use the flatten brush sometimes with a little bit of auto smooth enabled. That means it will flatten and smooth the surface like the smooth brush at the same time. And for sharpen edges even more, I would use the pinch brush. 
to make it even sharper. Certainly the resolution here is a little bit low at the moment, but I think you get the idea. And then certainly with a standard crease, we can sharpen or clean this up a bit to add a sharp edge down here as well. So, but yeah, I would not really suggest to do hard surface sculpting in Blender. This is unfortunately not really good here, at least now. And there's a little other trick. You can use the scrape brush and here let's switch to view plane and enable the locker symbol. And then we get this interesting brush, which cuts off a certain area here. And yeah, if you play around with this, you maybe can get some nice results with this as well. But it's really hard to control actually. But at least we get some really nice sharp edges here. Always adjusting the camera perspective. Here I realize that the ears are way too big and I scale them down with the grab brush a bit. And yeah, just fixing little things here and there. So here's a little trick if you want to fix some wobbly edges here on the ear, for example, there is this nice inflate brush, which basically thickens areas. So if I draw over here, you can see it thickens the area in all directions. So in this way we can yeah, fix the thin and wobbly edges and also the clay strips brush. If we are drawing over a cavity area or a hole here, it will fill the hole first before adding geometry to the areas around this. So if you use this carefully and then maybe smooth areas a bit, just slightly, and then smoothing this, you can fix areas. So then I added this simple beard object. Then I merged the body and the head and uh, smoothed out the transition between those two objects. Here I increased the resolution and started to add more details to the face. So I smoothed the surface a bit and then uh, sharpened edges and the wrinkles and stuff like this and added details here and there. So if you want to smooth a larger area here, you can see now here the resolution is relatively low. But now if I increase the resolution and start sculpting here, it would take a while until I cleaned up everything. So what you can do, you simply can increase the size of the brush, set the strength to zero, and then with a the clay strips brush, for example, just click on these areas. And although you can't see anything, it will add this high resolution to the areas where you click on. And then if you just press shift for the smooth brush, you can see if I smooth these areas, then we have the high resolution here. And then you can start adding all the details over here, for example. And you don't have to think about to fix all this low resolution while creating the details. Certainly on my second screen, I always had reference open from this Sphinx cat because certainly I don't know out of my head how, for example, the ear here looks like because there are all these strange shapes. And yeah, by just looking at the references, it was relatively easy to create all the different shapes and wrinkles. And since this cat looks so strange, um, you can also add your own ideas and uh, play around with the shapes a bit and especially with all the wrinkles and details here. As you can see for the wrinkles, I use the blob, 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 the blob brush, but you can also use the standard sculpt draw brush. This should work fine. And in between the wrinkles, you can use the grease brush to sharpen this a bit to make them more prominent. Always at the end of the wrinkles, I would suggest to smooth out the areas a bit so that the transition between the more smooth skin and the wrinkles is nicer. Here with a simple curve, I add the tail. If you want to know how to do this, go check out my Create a Hydra in Blender video. There I show you a little bit more detailed how to use the curves. Link in the description. So now let's get over to the beard. 
Um, I guess I used the reference there maybe to get an idea how this looks like. And yeah, first of all, just some cleanup stuff to get the shape right. And then I used the line tool under the stroke settings to draw these lines here with the crease brush enabled. And in this way, it was relatively easy to create this nice looking uh, ornaments and shapes on the beard. And the same trick I later on will use on the head. So yeah, let's uh, quickly take a look how this line stroke method works. Uh, Dintopo is enabled and it really doesn't matter what brush you're using. You can use a crease brush, clay strips, sculpture and so on. I, I just uh, use the clay strips brush here, go to stroke and under stroke method, let's switch to a line. And then I just can draw a line and it will create a line with the brush you have chosen here and also with the strings you have chosen here, as you can see. And this way it's relatively easy to create yeah, these shapes I created for the Sphinx cat. And later on you will see I will also use the curve method here. So let's quickly check this out as well. I click on curve and then by holding down control and then hold left click, I can create this dots for this curve. But keep in mind this lies on our screen. So this is not on the surface itself. Then I press enter and then it will create this brush on the surface. So in this way you can also create interesting ornaments and shapes. <laughs> so however, this sometimes does not really work that well. I saw that there's a cool add-on called Spline Sculpt. I didn't test it out yet. But there you can draw actually curves on the surface and then use the strokes to draw directly on the surface. So the curves are sticking to the surface basically and not on the screen like the standard curve method here. So I put this add on here in the video description. Looks promising, but I didn't test it yet. So yeah, let's get over to the head, clean up the areas a bit. A lot of cleanup, as you can see. And yeah, it's not that easy to sculpt hard surface in Blender. This is uh, one of the biggest downsides of Blender Sculpt Mode. But there are other tools like hard ops and so on to get nice hard surface objects. But in this case, as mentioned, it was okay that this looks a little bit more organic. So here I use the curve stroke tool to uh, yeah, add the more rounded shapes up here. Worked pretty nice. And then again, I used the line tool and the clay strips brush to add the stripes here. So then I thought I have to add a little detail up here, this little snake to yeah, add a little bit more interesting details to the head and the cat in general. And yeah, here I use basically the same tricks to sharpen the edges a bit and to add some interesting uh, ornaments on the snake. So I don't join the parts of the head because they are man-made and it looks okay if they are just stick together somehow. So, and now comes just the final finalizing uh, the cat with all the details. So I increased the resolution even more, add more wrinkles up here and just cleaning up the whole areas around the eyes and the mouse and nose, um, sharpen the wrinkles with the crease brush and also the mouse and the nose as you can see. So yeah, just clean up work and this takes some time. For the wrinkles on the forehead, I disabled symmetry, so we don't have the same wrinkles everywhere. Same on the neck here. This makes this look more organic and realistic. Also on the back, I added some wrinkles, as you can see. 
Here I used the jitter effect to add all these dots to the nose area. And in this way, this was uh, really easy to do. And certainly I show you how this works as well. I use a standard sculptor brush here. Let's increase the strength a bit. And here we have this, this standard space stroke method. And let's increase the spacing a bit. That means there's a space between the dots. And additionally, if we increase the jitter effect, Blender will place the dots randomly around my mouse cursor. And this way you can easily add these random dots. Yeah, and that's about it with the sculpting part. All right, now let's take a look how this Sphinx cat looks inside Blender 2.8 EV. We will analyze the shaders. We will take a look at the scene setup all the settings I used here and how I created the animation and how to output an animation from Eevee. So a lot of exciting stuff, let's get started. So Blender 2.8 is not official released right now, it's in alpha, so that means there are many bugs and not all features are supported at the moment. So only use it for testing purposes, not for real productions. If you wanna download this, go to blender.org, click on download Blender, 2.7, then scroll down and click here, latest experimental builds. And here you can download the Blender 2.8 versions you need. So first of all, let's take a look on my scene setup. For my scene, I set the background to black. I have two area lamps here to light up my scene. So really basic stuff. So I have this nice rim light in the background and a little bit of light from the side. So we have this majestatic but also mysterious look of this Sphinx cat. Then I used a 21 to nine ratio for the resolution. It's 2560 by 1080 and we have an animated camera here. By the way, if you are searching for the timeline, if you split a window here, you have to choose the dope sheet editor now and here you can change the mode to timeline. But before we get into the animation and depth of field stuff, let's take a look on the materials. So let's select the cat and over here we have the overlays. So we can turn off certain things or you just disable the overlays in general. So we have a clear view here and important, I've switched to the EV engine and set the viewport shading to render it here. So first of all, let's take a look at the skin shader. Everything you see here is 100% procedural, so I don't use any external textures, except for the skin I used some vertex painting. So first of all, so that we can use subsurface scattering here, we have to enable subsurface scattering in the render panel. And also for the material itself, we have to go to options and enable screen space subsurface scattering down here. As you can see, the shader is pretty simple. We used the principal shader as basis. To better view the individual nodes here, let's hit shift A, shader and add an emission node because right now the node wrangler add-on does not really work. So let's just connect this over here and then we can see what the individual nodes are doing. So here we have a noise texture with the texture coordinate object output. So the noise is evenly distributed on the surface. This I colored in black and white, as you can see. So we have this with a color ramp. So we have this result here. And the same thing I did down here, but with a different noise size, as you can see. So this we will use as mix masks for a different mix node. But let's first go down here to this attribute. This is a dirt vertex painting. In the original creation in Blender 2.79, where this cat was created, I used the pointiness feature, but it's not supported at the moment. And to get a similar result, let's switch to the solid viewport shading and let's change the mode to vertex painting. Let's enable overlay, that's important. And here to get this dirt vertex painting, you simply go to paint dirt vertex colors. Click on that and then it will generate these colors here. And for the cat here, I created two maps, two vertex color maps. One I called AO, that is this one here, stands for ambient occlusion. And the other one 
it's basically a black and white mask for the nose. So I color the whole cat in white. So simply choose white color here and then click on paint and set vertex color. Then I've chosen the black color here and just painted the nose area and a little bit over the mouse here. So I have a black and white mask I can use in the material. So let's switch back to the shaded view. And sometimes if you um, switch between the modes, it can happen that it will not automatically update. So just plug one of the nodes out and put it in again and then it will update. So I guess they will fix it pretty soon. So with the color ramp again, I can adjust this a bit. So I have a little bit more contrast. And then I use this as mix factor between two colors. So basically all the blacks will be colored in red and all the whites will be colored in this skin tone. Then I used the second color here, the second vertex color. By the way, you can add vertex colors using the input attribute node and type in the name of the vertex color slot down here. Just call it call for example, and then you will use this one. So then as mentioned, we have the second one for the nose. This one I used as mix factor for this node here to basically mix the third color in here for the nose. And then we will use the big noise texture I've showed you at the beginning to mix a third color in here just to get a little bit random colors all over the place. So we have these bigger spots with different colors. And then the smaller spots here, we again used to add these white dots here. So I basically just mixed different noise textures and the vertex colors to just get color variation for the skin. So I don't want it to have this one color skin all over the place. So on this I used as base color. I used this over a color ramp as roughness input and via a bump node I used this also as bump map. So you have uh, this little uneven surface as you can see. And I also used this as subsurface scattering color, increased the subsurf value but not to one because then it looks like wax. And the subsurface radius I changed the red values to one, the green values to 0.2. 0.25 and the blue values to 0.15. That means for the subsurface scattering effect that the light shines through the object, the red color shines through the most. So we have this nice reddish tone here. And this is pretty awesome to have subsurface scattering in real time. Here we can see it as well pretty good. So we have this nice skin effect. And that the glossiness of the skin is in some areas stronger than in other areas that I achieved with the roughness map here, which I basically used the same color over here. And with the color ramp, I changed the black and white values. So white basically means a very rough specular and black or dark gray means a very sharp specular. So yeah, Blender just crashed because I pressed Control Z to redo something and at the moment this causes a lot of crashes so I don't recommend to press this shortcut at the moment. You know Blender 2.8 is in alpha so no surprise. But anyway now let's take a look on the gold shader. So let's select the gold shader and as you can see super complicated. I use the glossy shader here. You can also use a principal shader and turn the metallic value to one. Then I have a noise map for the bump map and a noise map for the roughness map over a color ramp to define how much black and white areas we want to have for the roughness value. That means on some areas the reflection is rougher and in other areas it's sharper. So that's all about it. And that it looks so nice is mainly because the background is black. So we have this nice dark reflections in here. Then certainly we have the lamps to have the bright spots in the gold shader and we have this nice glow effect which we can enable in the render settings with the bloom effect here. Here you can also define what areas should glow and also for example the radius how big the glow should be. Then also important to see the nice reflections you have to enable screen space reflections volumetric we don't need in this scene. Then I have ambient occlusion enabled which we 
can't really see. It should be this extra shadows in all the creases and corners and so on. And then we have the depth of field effect, which is enabled for blurring things out, which are in the background or in the foreground. And yeah, subsurface scattering as mentioned for the skin shader. So now let's take a look at the eyes. So first of all, let's right click and create a new collection. And there I drag and drop the cat body so I can hide the cat body basically. So before we take a look at the shader itself, let's take a look at the eye model. So let's hide the cat here and let's go over to the solid shading. We have two objects here. We have this one here, which is basically a sphere with a little yeah, dent in front here, basically here an extra loop and the rest is scaled forward a bit. And if I move this over to collection three, we have two other objects, the eye left and right, which is also created from a sphere. And here we can see how this looks like. We have here a pretty flat area and then the pupil here is extruded to the inside a bit. On this object, we have two materials. If we switch over to material view, we can't really see anything. So let's go over here. We can see the black area is in the inside. So I basically select this, select the black material and then click assign. And the other material is on the other area. Then one important thing, because the whole shader for the eye is procedural in order to make this work, Let's switch to local up here, press T and choose the move tool. You can see that the local axis of this object is perfectly aligned with the rotation of the eye. So this is important in order to place the iris in front here. So let's switch to vertex paint mode because as you can see here, I also painted a vertex color with the name Col. Basically the iris area with a smooth transition here. So and one other note, these two objects are linked to each other. That means all the changes I do here will affect the other object as well. So basically I duplicated them with Alt D instead of Shift D. So with all this in place, let's take a look on how to create the actual shader. Let's switch back to Blender EV, to the render shading, and let's put the eyes outside back to collection one to see it. So the eyes outside, have real-time refractions, as you can see. And in order to make this work, I have a simple glass shader here. For the material, you have to enable screen space refraction. And in the render settings, you have to enable screen space reflection. And here you have to enable refraction as well. Then you have this nice refraction effect here. So now let's take a look at the eyes itself. This is how it looks like actually not that complicated again. So let's add a mission shader here so we can check all the different nodes over here. So first of all, I used the texture coordinate node with the object output and a mapping node with the normal mapping here. Let's put it into here to see it. You can see the alignment of the mapping over here, but let's take a look how this looks with a noise texture on this. You can see that this is scaling this in this weird way. And if we play around with this scale value here and this scale value, then we have this nice stretching over here. And if we put this into a color ramp with different colors, then we immediately have a nice iris effect. So here basically I put together two different colors to have a bit of color variation in the eye. And then I used my attribute node with the vertex color info, basically this black and white mask, put this into a color ramp to adjust this a bit. And then basically I mixed the color with this black and white mask as mix factor. So that means this color will only be displayed on the black areas and the white color here will be only displayed on the white areas basically. And then I use the vertex color again. Let's see how this looks like and put it into a color ramp, added a handle here. So I have basically the frame of the black circle from the vertex paint. And with a mix node, I just added this to the whole color of the eye. And then we have this black line around the eyes. 
yeah. And I used the color as bump information here as well, as roughness map. And then we have this pretty simple eye shader. So let's put eye outside back. And also let's enable the cat body. And yeah, with the body on, this looks even nicer. And this easy eye could create a very, very simple eye shader. Talking about eyes, if you don't just want to create this super simple eye shader I just showed you, I recommend to check out Christoph Werner's awesome CW eye shader for cycles, which is extremely customizable. You can basically create any kind of eyes out of this, like human eyes, monster eyes, zombie eyes, anything you can dream of. And also if you need these eyes for your game characters, for example, you can easily bake textures from the eyes you just created. So extremely useful, especially for character artists. And good news, if you want to have this shader, you can get 10% off by following the link in the video description. I tried it on my own, definitely recommend it. Yeah, and this is basically how I created the shaders for this cat. And now let's quickly take a look how I created the camera animation. So let's enable the overlays. So now let's select the camera here. And basically I have more or less linear movements of the camera. And in order to change the shot, I just animated one keyframe to the next which is then a complete different camera angle. You can see it a few times. So basically I make a cut on different areas here. So, and in order to make a linear animation, you basically put the camera to position one. Uh, let's go over here, for example. We have position one. I make a keyframe by selecting the camera, press I, and then save location rotation. Then I go Further in the animation, change the position of the camera to the end position and then I press I and lock road again. And in order to make this a linear animation, you select the keyframes and then press T and choose linear. That means the camera is moving with the same speed for the whole shot. So usually there is this Bezier interpolation that means it starts slowly moving faster over the time and it will end slowly. But most of the time, especially if you're doing camera movements, this looks some kind of weird. But what I did to control the rotation of the camera a bit more, I enabled the graph editor here. And here you can see the keyframes as well. And the left right rotation of the camera is the Z axis, the blue one here. So in some areas, like here for example, I selected the keyframes, press T and change this to Bezier. And then you can change the rotation over the time. So basically, if you want to have this a little bit more over here, you can change this curve. Same over here and change this a bit. So you can see, although we have the linear animation of the movement of the camera, we have a Bezier animation for the rotation of the camera. And this way I was able to control the rotation of the camera a bit better. So, and how did I create this nice depth of field effect? All you need to do basically is to enable depth of field in the render settings. Then in the camera settings, we can enable under display the limits to see a widget here basically for the focus. We have this yellow cross you barely can see. And let's go to depth of field. And here you can change the distance for the depth of field. So let's go into the camera perspective. You can see I can shift this around and this looks really nice. But in my case, I wanted to have the focus always on the same position. But if you just leave the value as it is and the camera is moving, you can see that the position of this focus is changing. But I don't want it to hand animate all that. So I just added Shift A, empty a plane axis here, this empty object, and put it to the position where the focus should be. And then in the camera settings, I set the focus to the empty object. And as you can see now, the camera is moving along and the focus stays always on the empty object. And with switching the camera perspective, I also animated the position of the empty object. As you can see, here I also had to animate this 
a little bit according to the mouse shape here, but it wasn't really complicated. So I had a very visual way to animate this instead of animating this value over here. If you want to animate this, you just have to press I over this value and then change it over the time and press I again if you have different values and then it will interpolate automatically. So, and then if we take a look in the camera perspective, we have this nice camera movement. Yeah, and one thing I forgot, you certainly can control how strong the depth of field should be with the f-stop value. So the larger the value is, the less depth of field you will have, and the smaller the value is, the more depth of field you will have, as you can see. So, and now, how can you render an animation? Go to the render settings, dimensions, set up your resolution, your start and end frame, frames per second, my case 25 frames per second. Then you also have render samples here and a few port denoising. Well, I'm not sure if this is working right now, but uh, yeah, this is also a little bit like rendering because it's not putting out the images in real time. So if you set up this, you also can set up the output. I always put out animations as PNG images because when Blender crashes, which actually did a few times while rendering this animation, I just can start again from the final rendered image and the image sequence you have then, you can easily import into many editors like Premiere Pro or After Effects and even Blender. And then you can export this as video. Set up the output path. I use PNG, in this case RGB, because I don't need the alpha background. And then in order to render, just go up here, render, and then render animation. Or if you just want to have one image, we can do it. Go on render, render, image or press F12 or control F12 for an animation. And as you can see, this is unfortunately not real time, but compared to cycles, ultra fast rendering. So this took 12 seconds. The rendering for the whole animation took approximately 20 to 30 seconds per image. Yeah, even for this relatively short animation, 1400 frames, it took me six to seven, eight hours to render this still. So, but if I would render this with cycles, it would probably take me weeks to render with only one computer. So compared to this, this is super fast. If you want to render this in real time, basically you just have to film your screen while playing back the animation. After you've rendered your animation, you have an image sequence. And now I quickly show you how you can convert this into a video. Just click the plus button up here and go to video editing, then under add image, then go to your folder with all the images, press A, add image strip. Then as you can see, you have the animation in here, but now you have to change the render settings as well. So let's add the data properties here, go to the render settings, set the resolution to the same as the original render, same FPS. And here let's choose FFmpeg. Encoding, let's set this to high quality, no audio, and leave the rest as it is. Choose the output path and then just hit the render animation. And then it will render the whole animation and put it into a video file. And this is how you can use Eevee to present your sculptings in a nice little animation. If you want to download this SphinxCAD EV file, link is in the video description. Yeah, guys, for me, Blender 2.8 is super exciting with all these real-time implementations. It's so fun to just create something and see actually what happens in real time. And I'm really excited because this opens so many opportunities by, for example, creating your own short movies without rendering this for months or so. And in most cases, I also like all the little changes they are doing for the user interface. So let me know in the comments, did you play around with Eevee and Blender 2.8 already? And if so, what are your plans for the future? Do you have any plans on what you want to do with Blender 2.8 and Eevee? Yeah, guys, as mentioned, if you want to have my free Blender Sculpting Sheet Sheet, 
download in the video description as well as my mastering sculpting workshop. And as mentioned, if you want to have 10% off for the awesome CW eyeshader, also check the link in the video description. If you like this video, tell your friends about it and like it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified for future videos and share this video. Yeah, guys, thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.